My name is Matt Carlson. I'm a neurotologist at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. I specialize in treating conditions affecting the ear, facial nerve, and lateral skull base, such as hearing loss, ear infections, facial paralysis, as well as tumors of the side of the skull between the ear and the brain. Among these conditions is the diagnosis of vestibular schwannoma, also commonly referred to as an acoustic neuroma. And this is the topic that I'll review with you today. Vestibular schwannomas are benign tumors that arise from the hearing and balance nerve between the ear and the brain stem. And because they are benign, they do not metastasize to other areas of the body, but rather cause all their symptoms from local growth. It turns out that vestibular schwannomas are actually quite rare, occurring in only approximately one to two per 100,000 people. However, our group at the Mayo Clinic has a particular interest in this condition, and so we see a large number of patients with this condition each year. So what are the symptoms that are associated with the diagnosis of an acoustic neuroma, or vestibular schwannoma? Well, because they arise from the hearing and balance nerve, the great majority of patients have uh, experienced hearing loss, ringing in the ear, and sometimes imbalance. It's very important to realize that hearing loss is a very common condition, however, these tumors are actually quite uncommon. Thus, the great majority of patients with hearing loss don't actually have a vestibular schwannoma. Less commonly, when a tumor has grown to a larger size, facial numbness on half of the face, or even increasing pressure in the head called hydrocephalus can occur. But again, these are less common symptoms and only occur with larger tumors. So the, a person is generally alerted to the condition or something being wrong when they experience one-sided hearing loss. This is often first noticed when the person is talking on the telephone, for example. These symptoms will often bring the patient to the doctor where a hearing test called an audiogram is obtained. If the results of this test show a particular pattern of hearing loss, then an MRI is often recommended. An MRI is the best way to establish the diagnosis of a vestibular schwannoma. And today, MRI scanners can detect even very, very small tumors with very high accuracy. So in contrast to other conditions, a biopsy is not generally required to establish a diagnosis of a vestibular schwannoma, but an MRI is sufficient by itself. When a person is first diagnosed with a vestibular schwannoma, uh, a lot of thoughts go through their head. They might have some anxiety, because after all, this is a tumor inside the head between the ear and the brain. We always want to emphasize to all of our patients that when treated by an experienced team, the great majority of patients do very, very well long term. So after a diagnosis has been established, the next important point of discussion is potential treatment options. At the Mayo Clinic, we do our best to present the patient with an unbiased review of all available treatment options, understanding the best treatment for one patient may be different for another patient. And we believe that a multidisciplinary approach for each patient, seen by a neurotologist and neurosurgeon specializing in treatment of these conditions, provides the best outcome for the patient. We also have an extended team that assists in care, including radiation oncologists, cranial nerve monitoring team, the ICU, and nursing staff, all which contribute uh, to the uh, valuable experience that you can have uh, at the Mayo Clinic for treatment of these conditions. When discussing the treatment of vestibular schwannoma, it's probably best to look at this, the type of tumor based on size categories. And broadly speaking, we talk about smaller tumors and larger tumors. Since the treatment between these two types of tumors, or these tumor sizes, are very different, uh, first we'll discuss small to medium sized tumors. Because these tumors are smaller, they produce less pressure on the brain stem and less swelling occurs from the tumor itself. And with this, there are essentially three good treatment options. Specifically, observation with repeat MRI over time, focused low dose radiation, or surgery. So now we'll review the different treatment modalities in more detail, specifically for small to medium sized tumors. So regarding observation, the idea is that a, a large number of small to medium sized tumors don't grow for extended periods of time. The important thing to always emphasize with observation is that symptoms are not a reliable indicator of tumor growth or tumor, tumor behavior, meaning even if the tumor stays the same size, a patient may actually experience hearing loss or dizziness or other symptoms. And of course, the reverse is also true. A patient's symptoms may actually remain stable even in the face of a growing tumor. And this is why it's critical that patients continue to get serial MRIs or MRIs throughout their lifetime if they don't have a definitive treatment for their tumor. The second treatment option is focused low-dose radiation. And this is given in a single session. In our experience, radiation is effective at halting tumor growth in approximately 93% of cases. The goal of radiation is to simply stop tumor growth. It generally doesn't make the tumor uh, shrink and it doesn't make it go away. The primary advantage of radiation is the minimal recovery time that a patient uh, has to go through. Patients generally feel the same the day following radiation as they do the day before. It may be many years before some of the adverse effects of radiation are felt, such as it's generally believed that hearing loss may progress a little bit faster following radiation than just having the tumor observed. 
A minor consideration also is that if radiation is not successful in halting growth, meaning the tumor continues to grow despite receiving radiation, then surgery is indicated. And, that, and at that time, the tumor would be slightly larger and having prior radiation would render the tumor slightly more difficult to remove surgically. The final option of treatment is surgery, and this rem remains the most common treatment for vestibular schwannoma worldwide. The primary advantage of surgery is that surgery physically removes the tumor and provides the highest chance of cure, to, and it results in the lowest risk of having it come back and cause more problems in the future. The, re the risk of recurrence after complete tumor removal is approximately 1%. The choice of surgical approach is largely dictated by the tumor size and location, as well as hearing status and other patient factors. So now we have just reviewed the three treatment modalities that exist for patients with small to medium sized tumors. And now we're going to talk about the separate group of patients, the patients that present with larger tumor size. And these, and these two size categories really need to be looked at differently because there's vastly different treatment options and goals for these different uh, populations. What is the cutoff between a small and medium sized and a larger tumor? Well that's debated, but generally most people agree that between 2.5 centimeters and 3 centimeters in size, meaning a tumor over 3 centimeters in size, again the treatment modalities and the treatment options um, are different. When a tumor exceeds 3 centimeters in size, it's already on the larger side and already causes some brainstem compression and potentially some adjacent swelling in the brainstem. In this group of patients, we believe surgery is probably the only good or the best treatment modality in general. Meaning additional growth that might, might occur with radiation or observation might result in potential significant problems for the patient. If, with surgery, with larger tumors, and a smaller percentage of patients will actually intentionally leave a very small amount of tumor behind that is adherent to the facial nerve or brainstem to reduce the risk of long-term facial nerve weakness. In this small percentage of uh, patients, a small tumor remnant can be effectively observed over time with serial MRI or treated with a small dose of radiation if growth is seen. So what does the future hold for vestibular schwannoma treatment? At the Mayo Clinic we remain very active in clinical and basic science research of vestibular schwannoma. An area of recent particular interest is the study of the genetic footprint of these tumors. In the future we're hoping to establish a biomarker that could be used to predict future tumor behavior. One of the main questions we could answer is maybe predict potentially with a simple blood test or some other simple test, what the behavior of the tumor will be. This would be very valuable, of course. If we knew the tumor was not going to grow for extended periods of time, then the patient may be very inclined to simply observe their tumor if it's a small or medium size. If, however, this simple test could show that the tumor is not going to respond to radiation, or perhaps it was going to grow quickly, then we might recommend a different treatment option for the patient. And this is one way that we think in the future we will be able to highly individualize treatment to result in the best outcome for each individual patient who is diagnosed with the vestibular schwannoma. A second area of research is a study of quality of life in patients with vestibular schwannoma. Traditionally, as a whole, our community has studied outcomes such as hearing loss and facial nerve weakness and tumor control, but as it turns out, there are many additional, less tangible symptoms that can greatly affect a patient's well-being following the diagnosis of a vestibular schwannoma or following treatment such as dizziness and headache, anxiety and depression, among many other things. If you're interested in learning more about this research, we encourage you to look online at several of our recent publications from our group. In closing, I hope this short video addresses some of your preliminary questions regarding the diagnosis and treatment of vestibular schwannoma. Again, I want to emphasize that the majority of patients can have a very good outcome if treated by an experienced team. If you've been diagnosed with a vestibular schwannoma and would like to receive more information regarding treatment, we'd be honored to visit with you. Thank you.